Alright, we're gonna try it again. I tried to do this once already, then everything fell to shit, so... Okay, so we're welterweight, Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz, this is EA UFC 2. Um... I'm not very good at it. I just started playing it today. Let's give it a shot. So, my 11th MMA Diary. UFC 199's decided it's going to be Luke Rockhold versus Chris Weidman 2, and co-main Faber versus Dominic Cruz 3. That's a fun, uh, fun co-main event. I'm excited for that. I think Dominic Cruz is going to tear Uriah Faber apart, but I don't know. I'm excited for Uriah to finally get another title shot, even though he's, I don't know how many he's lost already. And Dominic Cruz, it's always fun to see him in there. People don't like him, people think he's boring, I'm totally the opposite. I think he's a really uh, interesting fighter to watch. Yada yada yada. Okay, so the 196 card was pretty crazy. Particularly for the, particularly for the co-main event and the main event. But I uh, took notes on the pretty, uh, pretty much the entire card. Sorry if you hear my paper, papers crackling here, but... Gotta get my notes all sorted here. Okay, so. Uh, the first fight of the night was uh, Juicy J. Now I forget his real name. Justin Arosa. Who I, I liked in the Ultimate Fighter. I thought he might be decent. Hey, he looked like trash. Ishihara seems like a solid fighter. I'm excited to see his next fight. A uh, bit of a dirty trick when uh, Ishihara went, uh, went to touch gloves but then he kicked him instead. Um, knockout. It was a great post-fight interview by Ishihara. I love you, my beaches. He screamed. And then Joe Rogan had to translate it. You think he's, I think you just said, I love you, my bitches. And then uh, they left. That was pretty fun. Ishihara. Got a fan in me, man. Jason Sago. High-level Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gets the first-round TKO of Salas. Uh, yeah, Justin Saga looked really good in that fight. So, Leo Sanchez versus Jim Miller. Who did I pick? I picked, um... I picked Miller. What? Yeah, maybe I didn't pick this fight. I could have sworn I did. I picked Jim Miller. I don't have it in my notes here, but I did pick Jim Miller. Uh, but Sanchez won uh, the first round with ground and pound. Miller won the second with striking. And the third was too close to call. I wouldn't find with it going either way, but Sanchez Sanchez got the 29-28 unanimous decision. I was surprised Miller couldn't get it done, but Sanchez laid it out there, and I'm totally cool and happy with his win. Like, he always puts it out there. He always does everything he can to try and get a victory, even if it means he's going to get knocked the fuck out. But that's why Diego Sanchez is so popular with some fans. Feel bad for Jim Miller. Uh, I know he's this is at least his second loss in a row. I'm not sure if he lost one before the uh, Michael Chiesa fight, but he's on a bit of a losing skid. Hopefully, he turns it around. I like I like Jim Miller. So, the when the prelim switched over to FS1, my attention was divided between the Wolves game, even though the Wolves are shit, and uh, the fight or the Fox Sports One's prelims. So I didn't really focus much on either, but. My, I, I like Darren Elkins, and what I saw from him, he should win at least 29-28. And he really ground down Skelly throughout the fight, and he did win. I'm not sure what the score actually was, I didn't write that down, but Darren Elkins looked good. I think I think he got some 10-8 uh, rounds. Um, Vitor Miranda's knockout was super impressive. That was a pretty badass knockout. Lex Luthor. Uh... Nordin Taleb versus Eric Silva. I picked Eric Silva. And, uh, man, Nordin Taleb smashes him in the second. He caught the kick, and then he just fucking punched him right in the face. It was badass. feel really bad for Silva, but he picked... He did a pretty dirty trick where he went to go touch gloves, and then he punched him. I don't know what's up with people doing that, but that was pretty dirty. Yeah, but Silva was once a fucking super promising young prospect with some great highlight reel knockouts and, uh performances and now he's devolved into a fighter on the fringe he's like he's six and six in the UFC I mean they'd be justified in cutting him but he's a he's a name my boss he's always excited to watch Eric Silva fight Herb Dean is looking trim in this game 
But yeah, that Nordin Taleb knockout was pretty impressive. Alright, I'm just gonna try and focus on this fight. I only did a couple of them, and uh, I performed like shit, so. Conor McGregor has a very unpredictable striking style. Throws a lot of wild kicks, has some excellent knockout power as punches, and has a very strong ground game as well. This game looks really good. Nice left hand. The hair seems to be pretty impressive. Man, he really turned on that inside leg kick. <laughs> Both fighters Ooh. slow to attack, trying to get their timing down. Good slip by Nate. Oh, he tagged him with that straight. Good inside. I'm gonna. Ooh, look at Connor. I'm gonna do this fight for real, and then I'm gonna keep on with my notes. And I have a little mini essay I wrote. Nice job slipping the punch. He was looking for the head kick, but it was blocked. Missed on the takedown attempt. I'm really bad on the ground. I don't know. If the ground seems to be a bit confusing for me. Like I said, I only played about an hour of this, and it's in the uh, early access with EA Access. How good is this? Right though. So. Ooh, there we go. Kick his ass. Just over two on the clock. Tags him. He lands a knee here. Good roundhouse. Nice kicks. Oh, almost. Missed. Very good job of timing these shots here. McGregor with the jab. Very nice brawl. McGregor with a good straight. Woo! Oh, he's down. Ah. Uh. He's teeing off with some vicious shots. Oh, big kick to the head. Solid shot to the body. That Nordin Taleb knockout and the Vitor Miranda knockout. Nice roundhouse kick to the body. It's strange that a lot of the best fights tend to happen early in the evening, like on the early part of the card, because I think it's because you're so focused. Like, most people, I'm assuming, do not watch the entire, like, 15 fights or whatever the hell it is, but I do. Get up. And you do tend to lose a bit of focus towards the end there, because it's hard to, it's hard to stay focused for six hours on fights. And I just think that you notice the better performances earlier in the night because you're really paying attention. See some high level striking, great accuracy okay. That punch. Back to the 196. Here we see it from another end. Baja Grazada made Thatch look like a bitch. I was so excited for Thatch. I thought Match would make a quick the rise throughout the ranks. And now he has three losses. I think three losses in a row. I'm not sure if he, if he won one after Benson Henderson, but... Lost to Benson, lost to Gunnar Nelson, and then now Bagra Hasada, who I totally discounted. I had never even heard of the dude. I was like, Thatch is just going to go through it. This is like a fucking a little, uh, little warm-up fight for him to get back on track. Not so. He made Thatch look terrible. I could have sworn that Thatch would be fucking doing some awesome KOs, awesome striking and he just he just got laid on the entire fight and he couldn't do anything about it and that's his fault he should fucking be able to you think he would do that after that Gunnar Nelson loss you know ooh ooh let's take a look at the striking accuracy for Conor McGregor landing 60% of his strikes solid punch by McGregor man that cut is getting worse see how the hell did that happen How the fuck am I supposed to block this shit? And he establishes full mount. That's a big elbow, Joe. Huge elbow. Fuck. I don't know. I really have to learn this whole 
ground game thing. Cause I am just getting my ass kicked every time I try and do this. That's a little weird looking. Yep, sorry, but um, third round submission, head and arm choke by Baja Grisada to finish Thatch off. It's pretty impressive. Okay, opening video narrated by DMX for the 196 paper. That felt like amateur hour. That was kind of embarrassing. Why is DMX so fe prominently featured after all of his legal problems? Here is Bruce Buffer with the official decision. Yeah, it seems weird. So, Amanda Nunez versus uh, Shevchenko. Nunez dominated second and did very well in the first. Shevchenko crushed Nunez in the third. Not quite a 10 8, but in the ballpark. Wow, 29 27 for Nunez. This must have been a 10 8 second. Unanimous decision for Nunez. So, it wasn't a 10 8 for, for Shevchenko in the third, but. Nunez did get, well, she did dominate the second, and Shevchenko just started really slow, but um, I was a little bit surprised that there was a 10-8 second round, but Nunez definitely deserved to win the fight. Uh, let's just do it again, I guess. Tom Lawler, um, yeah, before the fight, Connor, or Tom Lawler had Connor peel off tattoos at the weigh-in and when I saw him in Chicago he was wearing like a million Reebok like everything the Reebok had he put it on and took it all off took forever at the weigh-ins it was pretty funny and then he walked out to like a prayer for his walkout song which is awesome I don't know why but it was just really badass <laughs> Lawler tagged Anderson in the beginning of the first 10-9 Lawler 2018 Lawler closes the round Lawler, oh yeah, 2018 for Lawler in the second I had, it was a close round though, and then I've got a 29-28 for Lawler, because uh, Anderson definitely won the third round, but in the end, Corey Anderson wins 30-27 to on two of the sc judges' scorecards, 30-27, to that means he won every single round. I thought maybe it'd be 29, 28 for Anderson. I would have been okay with that, even though I really thought Lawler won. But 38, 30 to 27 is just fart noises. It's like fucking terrible. Like that was one of the worst. I thought Lawler definitely won. I picked Lawler, and what do you know? I got another one wrong. Latifi versus Jean Volante. What a fucking unmemorable fight that was. Latifi 10 9, close round in the first. Uh, Volante kicks were pretty badass in the first round, but you didn't use them enough. Latifi 2018 in the second, and then Latifi 30 27. I thought he went every round. Volante looked like shit. Apart from those light kicks, uh, Latifi suplex was the highlight of the fight. I think that was in the first. Um, this was definitely a prelim fight. It should never have been on the main card. And it was the featured fight before the co-main and main event, which is just insane. They are not... Those are not freaking main card fighters, I'm sorry. I'm, Latifi looked good. Maybe Latifi deserves a main card fight now, but that was not a main card fight. I was just fairly disappointed by that. But it was, yeah, 30-27 unanimous decision for Latifi. Okay, I'm going to do one more fight, and then we're going to talk about the co-main and main event, for real. This game looks really good, and I, I went through the roster before I did this video. Damn, the roster is awesome. I got the pre-order pack, so I got um, Sakuraba and Boss Rutan, Mike Tyson's. Oh, he got tagged there, swinging early, both men. Good front kick to the body by Diaz, and he lands another one right there. Nice strike. I don't like how the clock appears and disappears. And he looks for the takedown. Shit. He pulls the lights out. He's got him down. Nicely done. He postures into place. 
Joe, that last shot opened up a nasty cut under his eye. Great trans. What? Half guard. And he gets reversed. Looking for the arm bar, looking for the finish. And that's out. Very nicely done. Great transition to top position. Oh, 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 man, they really rag ragdoll when they get their leg kicked out from Get up, you fool. Joey changes his stance. Straight left. Great spinning kick right to the body. Nice inside leg kick by Tia. Wow, what a back and forth exchange. Wow, what a great job mixing things up. Ooh. Trying to get that clinch. Wow. Oh, there beautiful you go. combination. And the clinch. He's able to get Ooh. back to over-under. Big front kick jump. He switches back to southpaw. The block ones are a little weird. You have to do the bumper to block your head, and then trigger to block your lower half, which is kind of strange. Looks for that front. Got him. I wish they had the Stockton slap in this game. I'd be using the hell out of that. Twenty seconds now. That's a solid leg kick. McGregor with an inside leg kick. And again. Woo. I tried to go for a takedown. That didn't work. Wow. They are on their feet. I'm excited for this EA UFC 2. I'm really glad that. All right, here we go. Round two. Inside leg kick. Another powerful leg kick. From McGregor, for sure, Joe. Joe, everyone in attendance tonight might actually be Irish. Listen to the support for Conor McGregor. Good roundhouse kick to the midsection. Joe, take a look at this. Oh, shit. Get up. It's weird that I'm afraid of Conor McGregor on the ground, but I literally cannot figure out how to defend transitions. Oh, that head kick caught it. Good kick. Man, the damage to his thigh is so excessive. I don't know how much longer he can stay in this fight. Good job blocking the punch. Oh, another powerful kick by McGregor. Ooh. In that exchange. McGregor with some big kicks. Nice leg kick. Oh, what an exchange. I watched this movie called Southpaw. It just came out last year with Jake Gyllenhaal. It was fucking ridiculous. It was so bad. He's working the arm here. He's got the leg across the face. He's gonna extend his hips. He's got him flattened down on his back. He wants to free that arm. Back. He's gonna extend his body. Got it. It's all over. Nicely done. There you go. That's a win. He was forced to tap. He got locked into that submission, and there was nowhere to go. Time now for our fight replay. Let's take a look at the setup here. And here it is. Again. Yeah, South Paul was terrible. Absolutely, perfectly. It was. It was so bad. Like, it's like if TMZ wrote a boxing movie. And finally, one more time. That's pretty much what it would be about. It was it was so melodramatic. Bruce Buffer with the official decision. 
Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to stop in this contest at three minutes, five seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by... Sorry, Connor. All right. Let's change fighters, and then we'll go into the co-main and the main event breakdown. And then I'll see if I can remember any other big news that happened. It's the roster is pretty pretty deep. It has this guy. I've only seen him fight once, and he was terrible. I was. I I think he's a big Mexican star, so I can understand why they did that. But he was really bad. Did I? I passed Diaz already. No, I didn't. All right. Okay. So, co-main events: Holly Holm versus Misha Tate. People are saying fight of the year, fight of the year, potential fight of the year candidate. I got some news for you. It wasn't that great of a fight. There was a couple exciting parts, but it was it was not a great fight. I don't know why people are so jizzed up about this. So, first round, I scored a 10-9 Holly. A lot of feeling out for the first five, but Holm tagged her a couple of times, and uh, Misha really didn't do much. Second round. People were given 10 8s to Holly or to Misha big time. I don't think it was 10 8. Uh, I gave it. I definitely gave it to Tate though. Tate dominates second on the ground, almost got the sub, but Holm defends. Would have liked to seen more damage from Tate though. That's where I didn't give her the 10 8. I thought uh, Misha didn't do enough damage. She held her down. She got a, she got some good shots in, but uh, Holly was definitely never in danger of, of getting finished. So. 10-8 rounds, you know, maybe we'll have to do a discussion about that, unless I already did, I'm not sure. I do these once a week, and I kind of forget a lot of things. That's why I make these, though, so I can go back and watch them to remember, oh, I remember the frickin' uh, Roy Nelson versus Jared Rolschultz fight. I have my thoughts on film. Let me just go type in my MMA diary, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to the coming event here. Really close third. You know, to me, I thought it was. I actually thought Tate barely edged it out, 29-28. But then I looked at Twitter and everything else I'm hearing after that, I must not have been watching it closely, because Twitter definitely gave that round to Holly, and almost everyone else did. Um, Misha's coaches did. Holly's coaches did. So I think I was a little too jazzed up from the second, where I thought, where I was like buzzing, and I thought Misha was definitely was like so close to finishing her and me and my girlfriend were talking about it we pay attention to the third so I, I'm guessing I'm wrong but I thought Misha did alright in that round so I had it 38 38 in the fourth because Holm easily won the fourth she did a great job of keeping distance and scoring so I had it tied going into the fifth and I guess a lot of other people did too since they had it 10-8 for Misha that one round doesn't matter but I'm just saying, I had a side going into the fifth. Fifth round was ticking away, and then suddenly Misha gets her down. Not a great takedown attempt. She just she just hung on to that leg, scrambled onto her back. Um, home. It was so exciting. Like that was one. That was I was jumping up and down the entire time. So Misha had a pretty good uh pretty good hold under her neck there, sort of standing up against the cage. And then uh home flips her over, flips her over her head. And I thought she was out, and then, but somehow, Tate holds on and chokes her the fuck out. Holly didn't tap. I can't tell you how impressed I am by people who didn't, who don't tap. Like that takes some freaking determination, willpower out the ass. It was pretty. It was it was inspiring by Holly that she didn't tap out. People are saying that she tried to tap out when she threw a couple like of those weird punches. I don't know if that's what that was. I don't think it was. So. Um, I felt terrible for Holly when it was all said and done. She seems like such a nice person. She shocked the world. And then her very first fight after that, she loses to Misha Tate, a person that Rousey beat twice. You know, people are going to start portraying her as a flash-in-the-pan type fighter. 
I don't think that. I think she's really good. But um, I was super happy for Misha too. My girlfriend's favorite fighter is Misha Tate. We went to go. We went to the Chicago card. Dillashaw had him out specifically for Misha Tate. She fought Jessica Evil Eye. Um, yeah, good for Misha. Oh boy, so main event time. What an exciting thing that was. So, first round. I had it for Nate. My scoring must have been off, but I had it for Nate. Connor looked amazing in the first round. But Nate looked pretty good too. Uh, Connor landed big power shots on Nate. Nate just ate him and walked forward. Just, it was badass. And then uh, um, Nate landed more. Connor hit harder. But Nate also got that takedown. Even though he ended up on the bottom. He, I think he tried to pull guard. But I don't remember it that vividly. That's the, I should just do these the day after. But I like to get my thoughts in and cover any other news and notes that happened during the week. Just an aside there. Second round. Nate hurt Connor with a hook and wobbled him for like a minute straight. Like you could just see Nate. People were saying that Connor, it was just gas. Like Connor looked gas in the second. And when Nate caught him with that, like, uh, with that cross left, uh, Connor's eyes just changed. Like they emptied out. Like he knew he was done at that point. But he stumbled around for like a, a minute, 30 seconds, something like that. And then uh, he shot for a takedown, and you knew that that was not a good idea and that it was definitely not going to end well. Uh, Nate just owned him on the ground. He looked like he looked like a master on the ground. He pounded him with ground and pound from mount, and then he slipped in a choke from the top when Connor turned over and let him get his back. Uh, slipped in the choke, and then he got the sub. Um, people are shitting on Connor for tapping be because Holly didn't tap. Nah, I don't have any problem with him tapping. He knew he was screwed. It was, it was, it was, it was crazy. Like, I had the same feeling when I watched uh, Rousey vs. Holm. Like, it's, he's not gonna win. I just knew it immediately in the second. It was pretty bad. Um, post fight, first things out of Nate Diaz's mouth when Joe Rogan puts him on the mic. He says, "I'm not surprised, motherfuckers." Pretty crazy, pretty awesome. Uh, Connor looked gas in the second, and afterwards he was saying that Nate manages energy better. Not exactly a huge upset in like the truest sense, because McGregor moved up two weight classes. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a fighter, I don't know anything about fighting, but Nate Diaz didn't have to cut a lot of weight. And he's always training. He's always in those um, triathlons or whatever. And I think in my last video I said that training for a triathlon is about the same as training for a fight. And I stand by that. But, you know, he's not going to get gassed. How many fights has he been in already? He knows what his body's like. He said that he said that um, he was going to have to take the first round slow so he didn't tire himself out. And then he'd get going as the, as the night went on. And... He definitely turned it on in the second. And here's a nice shot to the body. Um. Yeah, but it's not a huge upset per se. But Nate definitely turned over the wagon for everyone but Nate, Frankie, and Aldo. Um. And here's another perfectly. This shuts down the Connor hype train at welterweight. He should not fight for a title at welterweight, and so who else would he fight at welterweight? He has a belt to defend. The RDA fight doesn't make a whole lot of sense now coming off a loss. You can't really challenge for a belt coming off a loss. So the only real option is to defend his belt at featherweight. And, um, you know, that's the best, best case scenario for Frankie and Aldo. Uh, I personally think that Frankie should get the fight. He deserves it. He, uh, he deserves it. But... I'm pretty sure it'll go to Aldo, and I'm not going to say that Aldo doesn't deserve a rematch, but I'm just not sure that he deserves it over Frankie, you know? But yeah, those Nate's happy, Frankie's happy, and Aldo's happy. Nate's happy because he can he can do anything he wants. He just got his golden lottery ticket. He just beat Conor McGregor. He can challenge RDA, even though RDA kicked his ass the last time he fought him. Or he could fight Robbie Lawler, 
Back up to speed. That would be a fun fight, seeing him and Robbie Lawler fight. I'm not gonna lie. I think Robbie will probably... Well, that, no, I don't know. I was gonna say Robbie will probably knock his head off, but everyone forgets, including me, that Nate has a fucking iron chin. Like, his, he's insane. He just eats punches. But Robbie Lawler... He ate punches like five times in a row with Hart, with Condit, uh, Roy McDonald, and the two uh, Hendrix fights. You know, I don't know. That's actually a really good fight. I'm pretty excited for it, but I, I'm picking Lawler just out of out of my gut right away. Um, hold on a second. Let me see if I can turn my light on here. It's getting kind of dark. Okay, so now it's gonna, just going to go into straight monologue mode. I wrote a few things out here that I want to read. Sort of uh, expound on the 196 main event and what it means for the big... Okay, so... Something that struck me immediately when I was wa after the, I saw Connor win and even during that fight uh, was the parallels between the Connor defeat and the Rousey upset. Um, just... just Listen them off quickly. A similarity is that both acted like dicks before or at the end. Uh, Connor punching Nate's hand when they faced off at the uh, at the second press conference. And uh, them getting in a big tussle and everything. Connor punching Nate's Diaz's hand. It was a closed fist. He punched his hand out of the way. That's a real dick move. I don't know. It just seems like an asshole kind of thing to do. Um, and then of course Roz, Rousey spazzing out at home at the weigh-ins for no apparent reason. That was strange. Um, okay, another one is both were, beating, were both trying to beat their opponent in their area of expertise. You know, Connor, he's, a, he's an amazing striker. There's no, there's no question about it. What's going on here? Um, Check the kick. That's how he's won all of his fights, was, was through striking. So it's not like he's really trying to prove... Uh, that he's, you know, Nate's equal, but Nate, Nate's expertise is both in his jujitsu and in his striking, his boxing. Connor's definitely the bigger power puncher, but Nate's just a better all-around boxer. So striking versus Nate Diaz isn't exactly the greatest idea. Connor didn't use a lot of his kicks, which was strange because everyone uses kicks against Nate Diaz. Connor didn't really use them much. Let's take a look here. And then, uh, then of course he tried to go on the ground and recover, but you can't go into the ground versus Nate Diaz. And of course, Holly Holm is a world champion boxer, and he, and Rousey is not a back boxer or even a striker. And she tried to strike with Holly Holm, which was just disastrous. Um, another similarity: both lost in the second round, and uh, both fighters were at the peak of their fame when they lost. Two big differences, though. Connor moving up two weight classes. You know, it's not like he was king of his division for so long and then just been lost in you know, spectacular fashion against a fighter at his own weight class. He moved up two weight classes and uh, he got handled pretty easily. So, you know, that's an excuse. And the second way that there was different, they were different, was that Connor was excellent at making or at. Um, Manning up and acknowledging that he lost and that Nate Diaz was a better man that night. Rousey couldn't really do that because she got fucking devastated. Like her jaw was busted and uh, everything, but she never really acknowledged the fact that she, that Holly was better to her, better than her until she, like that Saturday Night Live performance where it was like two or three months later, you know. But Connor did all the interviews. He went to the press conference. It was. It was nice. It was nice the way he did that. He totally manned up and was like totally gracious in defeat. So what's next for Connor? Holy Christ, did you hear that? Some kids just totally spazzed out outside my window. That was nuts. What's next for Connor? Uh, in my opinion, like I said, he has to defend his 145 pound pelt against either Jose or Frankie. Uh, particularly if he could do it at 200, no harm, no foul. This would just go off as a misadventure. This 196 escapade at welterweight. So if he can do it in early fall, that would be all right too. But if he's gonna take extended time off, I don't know. That's that's not good if you ask me. I think that he should fight Frankie, but Jose at 200 is so markable that it makes too much sense not to happen. 
Like I, I already said all this earlier, but 170 is off the table and 155 titles after a loss is ridiculous. Um, looking ahead, I think Connor can afford one more loss. Uh, like within two or three fights of this fight, because you know his rise was so meteoric that he, once he fights the real top guys, it's it's understandable if he gets another loss. But if he were to lose three straight after losing this one and then losing his featherweight belt, and then if he lost another one at 155, I think his hype train would be completely off the rails. It would be a, uh, it'd be the rise and fall of Conor McGregor. So I'm just I'm hoping Conor can get a couple more wins and uh, keep this this money train rolling for himself. Um. Just sort of around the fight, one of my first fight thoughts after the Connor tapped was poor Dana White. The home Rousey uh, for the belt rematch was gone, and the the hype train for McGregor was derailed. And 200 still needs a big headliner. You know, those are two big money fights that are potentially off the table for 200 that I'm sure they were banking on. And not not necessarily Rousey home at 200, but you know Connor and Fighter X. For 200 would have made uh, the most sense, but um, while I, while I thought it was a good night for MMA and the UFC because it just shows how how exciting the sport can be, even though like you know in boxing you see the top of the you see, you see the top fighters and you just expect them to win every single time. With the UFC, this shows that no one's unbeatable. Perfectly placed Maybe drive. except for John Jones, but no one's unbeatable. That a guy coming off the street in nine days can totally beat the superstar of the sport because he's more experienced at the weight class. A great freaking fighter. However, this does probably hurt the UFC's bottom line for a year or more because it ruined a lot of big money fights. Like I said, McGregor vs. The World and Home vs. Rousey 2. If you could get Rousey versus Tate at 200, that would make uh, big bucks. But, you know, real fans, I don't know, quote unquote, real fans, smear quote, real fans, like myself, will totally feel cheated out of seeing Rousey really try and improve and take that loss back versus home, you know? Like, Rousey versus, if Rousey could beat Holly Holm, all would be forgiven. Totally. But if you just go Rousey. Tate, a girl she's beat twice already, and in, in you know, definitive fashion, tapped her both times. I don't know. I just, I just wouldn't feel good about it. I'd feel kind of cheated. So let me see here. Oh uh, yeah, I already said. What's next for Holly? If she can't get an immediate rematch, um, I. She likes to fight. If you can't get an immediate rematch versus Tate, which I don't think she, Well, I don't know. Maybe you can give her to her. Maybe you can give it to her, but if, if Holly can't get Rousey or Tate, I think she just has to wait for one of them. Like, that's where the money is. If Holly likes to fight so much, I suppose she could fight Amanda Nunez and make a real number one to, uh, contender fight, but... I don't know, she's in a bad spot. She really effed up. She should have just waited for that Rousey fight. People are saying, you know, fighters get, fighters want to fight, they should fight. It's true, but you got to think what's best for your career. You know? that, that second Rousey fight, you could have retired on. But I'm not going to tell people that they should or shouldn't fight. You know, it's their decision. So, like I said, I, my predictions were terrible after, um, look at this. Look at this. Is he going to choke him out? Armbar. Nope. Yeah, my predictions in London were a perfect 5-0. and oh. This week, I went 2-5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Actually, I went 2-8 and eight since that, I didn't write that Diego and uh, Jim Miller fight down. But Silva. Eric Silva. Definitely wrong. Brandon Thatch, definitely wrong. Amanda Nunez, I got right. I thought 
Oh, look at this! It's Nate Diaz actually beat him in the computer simulation. Nate Diaz, uh, Amanda Nunez, I got right. Tom Lawler, I got wrong, but I really was right, in my opinion. Blonte, I got dead wrong. Tate, I got right. I picked that upset. And Connor, I had wrong. I thought I bought in. I thought Connor was just going to run through Nate. But I was wrong. Never underestimate the Diaz brothers. They're awesome. Two and five. Two and six, I guess. Um, yeah. Trying to think of anything else big that happened. Shogun Hua, he's out of in April. And instead, it's going to be Glover Teixeira versus Sugar Rashad. Kind of a bummer. Uh, 198 officially Fabricio Verdum versus Stipe Miocic. And a lot of a lot of fighters want to get on that 198 card since they're going to a new place in Brazil, Curitiba. Anderson Silva wants on that card since it's his hometown. Uh, Cyborg, she wants on that card because, uh, I mean, it'd be awesome to see her in the UFC. I don't know what weight class she would fight at. Probably have to be a catch weight. Hell, do a Holly Holm versus Cyborg fight. That that'd make money. That'd make big money. Do it at 140. That'd be awesome. Fuck, I just totally found another fight for Holly Holm. Um, other than that, the next card's going to be Frank Mir versus um, Mark Hunt in Australia again. Oh, they've been fighting in Australia a lot lately, but um, Hector Lombard's on that card. Some asshole just went by on his uh, motorcycle or crotch rocket, so that's what that was. So yeah, I'll be... Doing this MMA Diary 12 next Friday, which will be the 18th. And uh, we'll preview that card and go over any news and notes that happened during the week. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.